Welcome. You're watching Head to Head. I'm Antonina Antosha with UA TV. The Ukrainian Orthodox Church moves closer to attaining independence. Recently, Ukrainian President Petro Poroshenko and the Ecumenical Patriarchate signed an agreement on founding the church. This step moves the process of receiving Thomas to the final stage. To talk more about this, we welcome to the studio today Lyudmila Filipovich. She is the head of the Religious Studies Department at the Institute of Philosophy. Hello and thank you for joining us. Nice to see you. So, as I have already mentioned, uh, there has been uh, the signing, the, the process of signing an agreement, and President Poroshenko called it a, histor a historical point for uh, Ukraine as a country. Clearly, we all understand that this is a turning point in Ukrainian in Ukrainian history. But why? Could you dwell on that more? Uh, yes, I agree with uh, President Poroshenko because this is. Uh, a point in our history, very, very important because we uh, come out of subordination to the Moscow Patriarchate and we uh, will become the part of the Orthodox uh, family, even wider, the Christian family, mm -hmm. and we could communicate after this uh, Thomas and this agreement with every Orthodox person in every point of the world. So, I think that uh, we, uh, the brand of the non-canonical church will uh, forever be washed away and uh, we, we, we have uh, a perspective to be a equal part of the Christianity world. Okay, now let's listen to what President Poroshenko and uh, Ecumenical Patriarch Bartholomew had to say about this. Okay. This agreement which we signed today finishes this process and creates all the conditions for the process of the preparing for the Synod and the receiving of the Tomos to be held in accordance with the canons of the Orthodox Church. The right to have an autocephalous church and your desire, which you have had for many years, is being fulfilled today. Balkan peoples have this right and have received autocephaly from the Mother Church. It is the exclusive right of the Mother Church to grant autocephaly when it believes it to be appropriate. Now, the Thomas itself is supposed to be handed over to the head of the church that is supposed to be voted for in the assembly. Now it's up to Ukrainian bishops to gather this so-called assembly, which is also called council, Sabor, I think. or uh -huh. council. Mm -hmm. When should we expect this meeting? Uh, it's very important for us because we expect that uh, the three Orthodox churches in Ukraine could unite in one church and they could elect uh, uh, the primate uh, of, your, uh, of their church and uh, we could uh, overcome the division between Orthodox people in Ukraine. It's normal if uh, every state uh, has uh, uh, its own uh, church and we could uh, uh, memorize the church in different uh, so-called orthodox countries like uh, uh, Romania or Greece or uh, for example Russia even. So it, it, it was not normal situation when we have the division between three orthodox churches uh, in Ukraine. So we hope to have the unity church uh, for, for all Ukrainians. But I think that maybe not all Ukrainians from the Ukrainian Orthodox Church, Moscow Patriarchate, could unite to this uh, united church because uh, they identify themselves like a part of the <clears throat> Moscow Patriarchate. And we need time to to, 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 to for, for their identification, new identification, because we understand that Ukraine, if uh, we have our own church, all people who believe that I, they are the Orthodox people, they unite to this church. Mm -hmm. Speaking of Moscow, when the agreement between the Ecumenical Patriarch Bartholomew and um, Ukrainian church has been uh, signed or achieved, Moscow, uh, called it, and I quote here, catastrophic, outside the canonical domain, and <clears throat> called the decision exclusively political. Uh, for them, yes, I agree. That from uh, their point of view, this is a catastrophic. 
uh, to lost uh, the Ukraine because Ukraine can gi give them about one third part of all uh, parishes. Mm -hmm. uh, it's about uh, uh, 12,000 uh, parishes in Ukraine from 36 parishes in all uh, Russian Orthodox Church. So, and uh, what is the most important, they lost uh, their uh, history because they uh, will begin their history not from the 10th century, but from the period when they became uh, a patriarch, a patriarch uh, in the middle of uh, 15th century. And uh, it's very hard for them uh, to realize that they are not the apostolic uh, church, that uh, Andrew, uh, Apostle Andrew, did not come to the Moscow River, but he came to the Dnipro River and he uh, prorogued the uh, Kievan uh, Christianity, not Moscow one. So, but uh, you see the history uh, is changing very fast and maybe in some centuries uh, they be, will be, begin to uh, think another way. We need now think about ourselves about our history and about our position in, in ecumenical orthodoxy. Speaking of our position, uh, <clears throat> what will change for Ukrainian perishers of the, who, are who are going to relate to the new United Ukrainian Orthodox Church? Uh, Except I, for the name. Yeah, the, the main problem, uh, this is to mm. be a canonical church. Uh, uh, like uh, other Orthodox churches in the ecumenical uh, or universal uh, orthodoxy. Uh, till this uh, time, uh, we, we are not a canonical church because mm -hmm. Moscow decided that uh, Patriarch Filaret and the Autocephalic Church, this is not the church uh, which has the same uh, rights like uh, Roman Romania or Greek or Constantinople Patriarchate. So we try to be the same and we will equal and we could communicate. It's very important with any Orthodox church, with any Orthodox person, Orthodox per person in the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, in order for Ukrainian church to be uh, independent, to become independent and um, get Thomas, we need, as I have already said, we need to choose a primate who has all the chances. Who, what are our candidates? Oh, it's a very controversial uh, question, and not only for experts, but even for those who are pretended to be uh, a primate. <laughs> yes, I know about uh, the very understandable and clear decision from the Ukrainian Orthodox Church Kiev Patriarchate. Mm -hmm. This church decided to uh, present uh, his uh, uh, patriarch, Patriarch Filaret, and nobody from the autocephalic church, unfortunately. And experts uh, uh, call uh, several names from the Orthodox Church of Moscow Patriarchate. I know about the Vinnytsky Metropolit Simeon, about the uh, Priyasov Khmelnytsky uh, Metropolit Alexander Drabenka, and even Archimandrit Ky Kirill uh, Gavarun. Mm -hmm. But uh, we, we don't know exactly who was the first person in this United Church, uh, Council de will uh, decide. Uh, we uh, wait for the decision of Council because we understand that this is not uh, the assembly, as you say, or gathering the uh, ordinary people. Uh, God uh, will be present on this assembly and maybe he could uh, show uh, those persons who could be the leader of mm -hmm. the new Church for Ukraine. In general, is there any chance <clears throat> to somehow forecast when the whole process of Ukrainian church gaining autocephaly is going to be finished? We have no exactly date, but we know our goal. Uh, now, now maybe it's not very important uh, when we uh, become uh, independent. Uh, important to understand and to self-identify ourselves mm -hmm. like independent church. I think that this is a process and we begin this process not um, in April this year, but many years ago. I think maybe 
when we lost our independence in this in the 17th century but uh, ukrainians uh, always uh, uh, we are sure that we could achieve our independent uh, status and we could be like uh, another Orthodox Church. Uh, the part, uh, absolutely normal part of ecumenical orthodoxy, universe uh, ecumenical orthodoxy. Thank you so much for coming and explaining the whole situation for us. That was Ludmila Filipovich. She is the head of the Religious Studies Department at the Institute of Philosophy. Thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned with UATV for more.